Oh my god. Okay. Not out of my nose, but from my mouth. Wow, that's crazy. Put it in my mouth? Jesus Christ, dude. You're fucking psycho. No, not out of my nose. It came out of my mouth. Anyway, uh, okay. Um, as I was saying, this is the last thing I wanted to cover before we got to like some other stuff. But uh, yeah, COVID-19 vaccine required for all New Orleans, oh God, New Orleans deputy constables ahead of the heavy eviction workload. What a fucking awful statement, dude. Heavy eviction workload, dude. Jonah's Book Club, thank you for the 5 2 give subs. Uh, evictions are upon us. I did talk to some people who are like, uh, who I know out here that are real estate agents and stuff like that, that I've just known from, you know, working out at Equinox and shit. They don't seem to believe that the, uh, they don't, they don't believe that like evictions are coming. Like they think that the uh, uh, California government is probably going to continue the moratorium and offer some help. I don't know how truthful that is. But what we do know so far is that the Democrats are not necessarily doing too much, with the exception, with the obvious exception, of course, of the progressives uh, uh, that are protesting. Uh, maybe a little too late at this point, but, uh, you know, Cory Bush is, is uh, camping Thank outside of hustle. Congress uh, to protest the eviction moratorium and the lack of action taken from uh, the lack of action taken by the the Democratic Party. How crime works? How drug gangs work? This is a fucking I'm sick Neil. video. Holy shit. Uh, we'll take a look at that. Is there any video? Uh, are there any good videos on the eviction moratorium? Yeah, looks great. Speaker Bobby. Pelosi calls Biden to extend the eviction moratorium. However, uh, Biden is urging landlords to pause evictions for 30 days as the White House scrambles for a solution to extend moratorium. Except Democrats have already mentioned uh, in the most Democrat way possible that... They have no way of dealing with this. Thank you, Dre. Wish happy. They have no way of dealing with the uh, eviction moratorium from a legal Please. point of view. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. And um, okay. I just. Say if Congress doesn't act, renters from coast to coast are at risk of losing their homes, and the COVID pandemic will be supercharged, particularly in be. unvaccinated communities. That's because research tells us that if someone is evicted, they are most likely to move in with friends or family or into a shelter. That only increases community spread and leads to more infections. And sadly, in some cases, more deaths caused by the pandemic. Republicans have proposed a bill that would have fixed the issues with the emergency rental assistance programs to keep renters in their homes. Yet the majority has refused to act. And now, because of their refusal to act, we are suddenly being dragged into the Rules Committee. Majority has only themselves to blame for allowing this crisis to fester. Is it an emergency enough that you're going to stop families from being put on the sidewalk? Is it emergency enough that you're going to need to wonder what the hell is going to happen with these children that won't be able to go back to school uh, because they don't even know where they're going to be sleeping or they're going to be? It's an emergency. And so, yes, we should move forward. And we should do everything that we can. So I think that this is rushed. Uh, this is this is not the way to legislate. And uh, the majority has not done its job to actually do the hearings so that we could move forward on a legislation that would um, be appropriate for this time. So this is my uncle, William Edward Mann, Ernest Mate Third Class. And this was a letter that was just unearthed from one of his cousins that, that he wrote just about a month before the attack on... Um, Pearl Harbor, and it's even postmarked with the U.S. Sorry. What to know about the eviction moratorium by Newsweek? Roughly 3.6 million are facing eviction within the next two months. When the nationwide ban on evictions ends on July 31st, 6.4 U.S. households were behind on rent. What? 6.4 what? Million? 6.4%? What the fuck does that even... Dude, who writes this? Just six and a half. Just six and a half. Not even six and a half, dude. 
Just six houses were behind on rent. Pog, only six people are going to be. Sparked by the coronavirus pandemic, the moratorium was put in place in March 2020 as a part of the CARES Act. Yes. But it does not cover landlord expenses or cancel rates. So here's the thing. Here's the problem with the with the moratorium. Biden routinely said that there would be uh, like an unlimited supply of money from the federal government to help homeless people get at least temporary housing within hotels. That was never utilized. Thank you, Molly, for the 15 gifted subs. I'm going to put this here. I think this is a good place to put it. Um, and also not only that, but like a lot of states have not implemented, months, baby, hassle, hassle, a lot of states hassle, have not hassle, even hassle, implemented hassle. the, the, uh, the additional federal funds that were offered additional federal funds that were offered to both landlords and also renters with respect to, uh, with respect to like helping pay for rent. You say a lot of shit states, but like California is a great example of this fucking uh, uh, problem as well. He also said that we would get minimum wage done and that student loan debt forgiveness would happen and that we're getting 2k checks. Maybe he just lied. Yeah, he just doesn't give a fuck. I don't think if we're being honest. Only 4 billion has been given out. 43 billion has, uh, was given to states. I'm about to spit hot fire on these fucking uh, on this on this beat though. Yeah, Congress allotted 47 billion, but so far billions of dollars have yet to be spent by states and localities. And President Joe Biden said he was not allowed to extend the moratorium because the Supreme Court is, is saying that it's unconstitutional. Five months foggers. Uh. Uh. Yeah. To worry against the about order. these evictions. The moratorium is going to be over order. at the end of this month. And I think it is absolutely necessary for us to pay attention, to do everything that we can to make sure that we just simply aren't having evictions that are going to put people out on the street and increase homelessness. That's right. Some signing it has created financial hardships for them. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Roughly 6.4 households. Dude, they're still saying 6.4, dude. Oh, a combined $21 billion to landlords. Jesus Christ. The threats disproportionately affect renters of color. Yeah. Uh. Boom. 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 Playing hip hop while talking about historic evictions is kind of weird. Yeah, I know. Poverty expert and researcher Julia Raifman of Boston University tells me regarding eviction moratorium, says Jeff Klein, the Kavanaugh opinion was premised on rent relief getting out, so the administration could have tried to make an argument to make that the justification for extending the moratorium. So there is some uh, eviction moratorium. The eviction moratorium could uh, continue. We'll see. Some landlords can refuse the money so they can kick out renters and raise rents. This is there's a there's a bunch of different reasons for why. Uh, some renters have said, some renters have said that uh, uh, in an effort to agree to this relief, that landlords are engaging in like really fucked up contracts and seizing Happy more to control. Be King has comfy. Despite eviction ban complaints, big landlords report record profits, CBS COVID. reported. Also, it was rumored he was hanging out with Manchin and other senators this weekend, <laughs> Munkor. Papa Hussain. New John Oliver today. covers the EMS. Yeah, we're going to do that. Hold on. 
<sighs> hey guys. Not to get too fucking conspiratorial. But there's a shortage of laborers in this country. Okay, I already ran the top of the hour ad. There's a shortage of, of, of laborers that are desperate enough to work at these jobs. Okay? Chamber of Commerce is heating the fuck up. They're upset. They keep asking the government to interfere, to intervene. And to push these fucking poors to get the fuck back to work. Now that, uh, you know, homelessness is uh, being made illegal in even places like Los Angeles County and California. 11 months radicalized. Uh, at the precipice of this eviction moratorium, perhaps this is one way to motivate the working poors to get the fuck back to work for the meager wages that their bosses uh, tell them is enough. Okay. So far, we have not done enough to uh, force local governments to utilize the relief funds or extend the eviction moratorium. Uh, the Biden administration gave up on the $15 minimum wage. They do keep saying fucking nice and cool things like, hey, perhaps you should pay these people more if you want them to get to work. But uh, beyond that, it doesn't seem like they're doing too much. So I don't know. Anyway, they gave up on everything good because Biden is blue Trump dog. NBC did a good video on the eviction moratorium ending, even though it's hella short. Tonight, fear and anxiety in neighborhoods across the country. I don't want to be on the street. Yvonne Bryant lost her job in the pandemic and has been struggling ever since. She's among the more than 6 million Americans behind on their rent. How far behind are you on your on your rent? Three months. I mean, this is always coming up. This is there are a lot of people in trouble and a lot of people that need help. Anthony Simpkins is the CEO of a nonprofit in Chicago that helps people stay in their homes, distributing some $2 million throughout the pandemic, but he says it's not enough. Oh, it's definitely a potential crisis. The vast majority of these people are going to be low-income renters and are least likely to be able to sustain the shock of loss of income as a, a result of the pandemic. The eviction moratorium ends tonight. Nope. I'm like, I might be homeless at any day. In a last-ditched effort, the White House urged Congress to extend the moratorium, but Democrats didn't have enough votes. They're now recessed for six weeks. The federal government has allocated $6 billion to help with rent and mortgages, but it's not getting out fast enough. So even if a tenant has applied for emergency rental assistance and hasn't received it yet, that's not necessarily enough for them to avoid being evicted and losing their homes. It's money that landlords have been waiting for. There's been no safety net provided that was focused on the landlord's needs. It's been focused on uh, avoiding eviction of tenants. Property owners shortchanged some $21 billion nationwide. Many not able to weather the storm. Are people going bankrupt? I mean, what I don't understand is if there's $40 billion of unused federal funds for specifically this purpose right now, okay, $40 billion of unused funds and there's $21 billion of unpaid rent, just fucking wipe it. I know it's not that simple, but just wipe it. I don't know. I, it just it doesn't make any sense. What the fuck are you doing? I mean, that's not even a permanent solution. Just erase it. Pay it off. For California, I don't think that, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like California might actually do that because we do have a fucking fat surplus right now. As a consequence of like high earners and wealthy people uh, not really being impacted by COVID. 
uh, you know, blue collar jobs and things like that. It, people just like still making a fuckload of money in, in California. So uh, there's a lot of funds right now. And I think Gavin Newsom, with the threat of a recall, basically brought up something similar to this. California's already pushed it off further than any other state for evictions. I have some sort of some audio feedback hassle. distortion in the background. Don't know if it's fixable, though. It is, but I don't want to fix it. It's the AC. This is the noise that I hear all the time in the background while I'm streaming. You're hearing it as well because I lowered the noise gate. Did I say blue collar? I meant white collar. Go for this. Yeah, there are some who are suffering um, financial hardship because of it. The pandemic affecting so many homes and livelihoods at stake. It's absolutely a race against time and, and we're actually out of time now. Megan Fitzgerald, NBC News, Chicago. Thanks. Anyway, um... But of course, Congress can't deal with it currently because they're in recess, okay? They're chilling, boys. I love how landlords who knowingly understand that their properties or investments are and are subject to losses in adverse situations now want a life loan. You know, that's a really interesting point that I had never seen. But I mean, most Americans will tell you, well, every other fucking industry got a lifeline. Why not real estate? You know what I mean? But you are right. You're absolutely correct. And most other people's lifelines were conditional, even though, you know, there was a lot of uh, fuckery. But most other people's lifelines were conditional on uh, paying their workers. Whereas a lot of these landlords don't have that. They just own properties. They're not like, you know, the ones that do have workers, for example, uh, probably already took advantage of the P, uh, the triple P or the, the payment program during uh, COVID. So the PPP loans. So I don't know. What are some good books? I actually am helping with the process application for one state's relief programs. Reason. On many of the applications we've gotten, landlords have just not wanted to go through with applying, so the tenants cannot receive assistance. It's bullshit. Yeah, a lot of the landlords don't want to fucking take it, so they can evict their uh, uh, tenants. Now, of course, there's the other side of this, which is, you know, uh, perhaps a reason why Kamala Harris uh, and, and the Biden administration is not doing too much. And that is because BlackRock, which is private equity that uh, heavily is invested, not like entirely, but still pretty heavily invested in the real estate market, uh, basically buying out as many properties and and causing this As asset bubble that we are uh, currently that living inside of will be unable to finance their new pontoon boat uh, as i've talked about before Kappa. blackrock executive picked as kamala harris's top economic advisor you don't love the spirit of justice you love your father the devil The gap between the rich and the poor has gotten bigger than the Gilded Age. We are currently experiencing the biggest distribution of wealth from the pandemic and also the it's massive privatization of public needs as well as the most infrastructure Ajahn bills. Pogo, Being a gigantic giveaway for the private sector and Wall Street. We are putting a band-aid where structural change is needed. We are doomed, bro. I agree. Nine months with the best chat. Love you all hassle. Corporate investors now account for 21% of home purchases nationwide. And a lot of those homes that were supposed to be like homes for first time buyers which is the most important thing you can do for wealth creation in this country it's seen as like the bedrock the foundation of wealth creation it's partially 
the biggest reason for why there is a gigantic wealth disparity amongst black Americans and white Americans because they were literally fucking prevented from uh, engaging in the same programs that white Americans were engaged in. Okay. Yeah, uh, BlackRock is, and, and, you know, corporate owners are functionally pricing most normal first-time buyers out of the marketplace and then forcing them to go out and rent the very same homes that they could have purchased. It's great. They're taking those, they're, they're taking those fucking, they're basically taking those houses and converting them into lifelong rental properties, okay? Wouldn't people, wouldn't evictions help people get out of rent control apartments? Help? Help people get out of rent control apartments? What? Are you fucking memeing, dude? Well, I'm confused. Four month subscriber. What do you consider this Where's to be a when you need positive? I, I don't understand. This guy said it best. Does killing someone help with their medical bills? Or in the same way that a bullet, uh, you know... Pr helps with cancer yeah did that happen to you when you try to buy a house yes Eleven months, my twelve months. Home ownership accounts for two thirds of generational life. wealth growth in America. Acting like this isn't actively a part of American policy that is perpetuating the poverty cycle, especially where POC is an active delusion. I agree. That's why I'm saying it. He just repeated, wouldn't evictions help people get out of rent control departments? Yeah. I meant from the landlord's point of view. Yeah, well, fuck the landlord's point of view. Yes, but yes, you are right. But we're talking about eviction as a crisis for the average working class American. This is the very situation I'm facing right now and discussing with my friends. All I get as a response is for is caping for the investment firms because they consider themselves investors because they have money in the stock market. Yeah. I mean, I have I have finance bro friends who literally are like, dude, just keep renting and fucking, you know, uh and and invest. They look at it exclusively uh from a, the point of view of like return on investment. And since we've had such uh, you know, bullish markets for uh, an extended period of time it, it for a lot of people it just seems like it's a permanent growth model and uh, that uh, you know your investments are always going to uh, return even though yes as you also correctly pointed out renting is more than mortgage payments like literally hassle it is What I pay in rent here, $3,100 or 3,000, yeah, $3,100 a month is more than what some people pay in fucking mortgage payments. Yeah. eviction deadline was coming for weeks mm -hmm. yeah. democrats control the house you guys control the senate you guys control the white house nothing aggressive was done by leadership mm -hmm. uh until just a couple days ago who's to blame here 
Well, you know, I think there's a couple of, of issues here. First of all, you are absolutely correct in that the House and House leadership had the opportunity to vote to extend the moratorium. And there were many, and there was frankly a handful of conservative Democrats in the House that threatened to get on planes rather than hold this vote. And we have to um, really just call a spade a spade. We cannot in good faith blame the Republican Party when House Democrats have a majority. Now, there is something to be said for the fact that- Wait, the last thing I will say about home ownership is the main difference between someone who is locked into renting for the rest of their lives versus someone who is making fucking uh, home payments or someone who's making mortgage payments is access to capital, okay? That's it. That's literally the fucking main difference and your cash flow overall and having a good credit score and a multitude of different things that make it so that you can actually fucking get a loan to be able to put and also have enough capital to put a down payment so you can get a loan and then pay off your uh, house that way. In a lot of circumstances, yeah, you're not paying for like additional fucking uh, shit that goes wrong in your house when you're a renter. But ultimately, uh, or you're not paying property taxes. But ultimately, you're literally paying more with rent for the rest of your life. If you, all, if you had like, I don't know, $50,000 or $100,000 that you had been able to save up which you won't be able to because the budget shortfall is baked into your existence, basically, because being poor is very expensive. Being working class is very expensive. You would be able to, at the very least, justify being able to get a loan and put a down payment so that you can turn around and pay mortgage on a property that you now own, and in, which is incredibly important for, again, uh, generational wealth creation. So that's the problem. Yes, rent scales with inflation while mortgage is locked over the 30 years. Yes, exactly. That's the issue. That's the problem. The mortgage rate prices in inflation. Um, yes, but not in the way that in not in the way that you think. Did you respond to Valkyrie about this? Yes, I did. Uh, we will. We. Oh yeah, here it is. Um, uh, Valkyrie uh, wants to do a nail. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try screen. to convince them to go uh, get his nails done with me. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna do like we're gonna go to a nail salon or That's something. Full months. Anyway, let's get back to AOC. This court order came down on the White House a month ago, and the White House waited until the day before the House adjourned to release a statement asking on Congress to extend the moratorium. This came after weeks. I sit on the Financial Services Committee, which has jurisdiction over housing. We had, you know, the, the housing secretary there Hundreds asking about the administration's stance. Uh, we asked the Biden administration about their stance, and they were not being really forthright about that advocacy and that request until the day before the House adjourned. And so the House was put into a, I believe, a, a needlessly difficult situation. Um, and it's not just me saying that. Uh, Financial Services Chairwoman, uh, Chairwoman Maxine Waters has made that very clear as well. And so there's a couple of contributing factors here. We have governors who are also not getting this emergency rental assistance out in time, which is forcing this, this extension, what we would like an extension of the moratorium. The fact of the matter is, is that the problem is here. The House should reconvene and call this vote and extend the moratorium. There's about 11 million people that are behind on their rent at risk of eviction. That's one out of every six renters in the United States. Congress is out of town for the next seven weeks. Uh, Speaker Pelosi made it clear in a letter to Democrats last night she's not calling the House back. The Senate's here because uh, they got the infrastructure bill. Um, what's your and you heard uh, Ma Manchin say that he thinks that the uh, moratorium should be extended so that these tens of billions of dollars can get out the door. What's your response? Well, listen, you the House adjourned technically for on. seven weeks, but I want to be very clear that due to the ongoing negotiations with the bipartisan infrastructure bill, we were given very specific instructions that we are set to adjourn for seven weeks, but 
Every member of the House of Representatives is currently on a 24-hour callback notice in anticipation of that bipartisan yeah, infrastructure bill. So we all have left town with plans to come back within 24 hours if necessary. And I believe that the expiration of the eviction moratorium and having 11 million Americans, one out of every six renters at risk of, of being kicked out of their homes is worth coming back and triggering that 24-hour notice. We cannot leave town without doing our job. Can you explain to the American people why it is that these tens of billions of dollars that Congress has already passed mm -hmm. to help renters, and also, you know, we shouldn't depict, and you're not, but landlords, some of them are small business people. They need the money, too, to so Absolutely. they can survive. These are not all just Jared Kushner slumlord types, right? And so... This money's there. Mm -hmm. What's the holdup? Why can't it get out the door? Well, you know, this money was handed over by Congress and the federal government to states and local municipalities to dole. It's kind of... I just... Oh, my God. Okay. Um, wait, what? Biggest UK anti-vaxxer caught on camera taking money to leave AstraZeneca alone and focus on my advisor. Shut the fuck like up. Subs and get oh, my dick is so one. hard. I fucking love these guys, man. Literally the greatest fucking... Just these guys are... the greatest white folk that have come out of South Africa, okay? I think I'm going to say it, dude. He's also Jeremy Corbyn's brother. Jeremy Corbyn's brother is fucking anti-vaxxer? Are you serious? What the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me? No! Okay, hold on. Let's finish this and we'll watch it. Pull out. And what that means then is that each, each individual governor is responsible for establishing these programs. I think that in some states, governors and, and state administrations might be slow walking this process. Just to get it out. In other states, the administrative burden of setting it up. But there are, are states and municipalities that have been getting it right. Mm -hmm. And we are at a point where... Frankly, those state governments need to get it together, but we cannot kick people out of their homes when our end of the bargain has not been fulfilled. Out of the 46 billion that has- <laughs> But we can when, when, it's, when it is fulfilled, like we shouldn't do that regardless. Allocated, only 3 billion has gone- What's the left's opinion on small business landlords, scummer, okay? Okay, so here's the thing. And I've talked about this a billion fucking times and uh, it bears repeating every single time we talk about landlords because people fucking have like uh, opinions on this that are uh, unfortunately too based in in like uh, uh, fantasized, idealized uh, theory, okay? Landlords are still a, a parasitic form of making money, okay? Especially on uh, non-commercial, straight up fucking, uh, what do you call it? Like regular properties, okay? like regular real estate that you need because you're basically cutting off access to a resource. Residential was the word I was looking for. It's considered parasitic because you're basically fucking rent seeking. You're engaging in rent seeking, rent seeking behavior by shutting off access to a resource that human beings need to be able to survive. It is the most important need shelter. Okay. It's kind of the reason why we built societies, okay? So that we could fucking have shelter and protect one another. It's literally the most important thing. However, unfortunately, in the way that our capitalist uh, economy has been organized, there are like people who have uh, worked their entire lives or uh, who are now, you know, 60 fucking years old and own an additional unit or an apartment as their fucking nest egg using that same parasitic uh, concept, okay? It's like being a leftist and having a 401k because being a leftist does not mean you should fucking die when you can no longer work. You should still actively seek to protect yourself and actively seek to 
you know, build a a a, a future for yourself. So I've talked about the the you know percentage of people that have like don't you literally own a square foot of land in England? Yes, I now do. I am a I am a land owner. <sighs> anyway. Because there is no functional way to ethically fucking survive if you have worked your entire life and don't have any capital, you can't just basically survive on social security. There's no such thing as pensions anymore uh, uh, outside of like certain industries. And I guess like, uh, thank you Jonah's book club for the tank of the subs. There is a, uh, I mean, and pensions themselves are already like quite controversial to begin with, but because social security payments are not enough to fucking survive, then yes, some people engage in, some older people especially engage in I have a pension, so that's not true at all. I'm talking about the... What are you supposed to do? Like, I have a pension, so that's not true at all? I guess, okay, if you don't have a fucking pension, then, you know, fuck this guy's anecdote. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, fuck you, dude. You don't have a pension? Well, this fucking guy does, dude. Sick. It's like saying... It's like an older person being like, well, I fucking bought a house, so that's not true at all. Oh, sick, man. Never mind. The fruits of my labor my isn't your retirement money. Fuck your retirement, says guillotine 2020. Bro, you're fucking 14 years old. Please stop. Okay? Please stop. I dream of a future where there is no more need for fucking landlords. Okay? Not need, but rather there is no more. I understand that. I understand uh, how wonderful it would be if people just simply utilized housing and shelter not as capital investment or, or uh, an investment vehicle to make uh, money but rather as a place that you live as a place that you live in and use as shelter having said that though currently in this day and age good luck good luck on one gaining enough momentum to build a fucking mass movement that will uh, uh, forcibly remove people from their fucking houses. And then good luck having a take like that when you're talking about a 70-year-old person who's like, yeah, I own a fucking apartment. I can't go to work. What are you going to do? Are you, should a 70-year-old who owns a fucking uh, additional housing unit like literally die? What, what are you, what's the take there? What's the advocacy? What's the argument? In the absence of like, in the absence of like government interference and public housing, and decommodifying housing, which would take years, many, many years. It's fucking psychotic to just be like, I don't give a shit. I don't care if you're, uh, you know, I don't care if you're, if you're 65 years old and can't, can't live on fucking social security alone. I don't care that you like literally made all the money that you could and like waited for years and years so that finally you could fucking buy a house. And this is the only way that you can, again, survive. You've said how small landlords need that income because they're old or helping pay their, for the kids' education if they own another house. You've said how small landlords... Yeah, I did say that. A lot of that could be solved if, the, if there were appropriate public funding. And appropriate public measures and social and, and safety nets that allowed people to fucking live without any additional uh, help, any additional like uh, retirement funds that they had to cultivate and put together. Okay. What's up? 
it's also an idiotic take. Like we're having an argument about like a a, a, a fraction of the uh, landlord industry, I guess, and avoiding the real fucking uh, main problem, the main source of the problem. Percent I've been playing your videos in the background while my dad and I worked from home and because of you my super lit 56 year old dad started criticizing Nancy Pelosi for the first time on the eviction crisis. <sighs> I work in higher ed and I started my career in 2008. A pension option immediately went out the window as soon as my career began. Pensions okay. are a wet dream for us. Yeah. Only 17% of Americans have a pension anymore. Larger problem is pensions getting depleted. It's a big factor causing this landlord lead situation, it sounds like. Yeah. I wish I wish we had appropriate government... I wish we had appropriate government funds so that people didn't have to fucking be landlords, okay? In the absence of that, though, you're fucking... Whenever you say shit like, yeah, fuck grandma, I don't give a shit, she can die, then you are you come across like a delusional psycho. Sorry, it's just the fucking truth. That's what I advocate for. Landlords have decided that since those safety nets don't exist, they can just build one out of the bodies of poor people. No, I, I, I understand it. Except they themselves are fucking poor. You make it seem like there's like... You make it seem like grandma's caked up. That's what I'm saying. Grandma's engaging in an unethical way of, of, of wealth creation for herself, but wealth creation doesn't always imply that you have fucking wealth. Okay? But again, it's really, really stupid that nobody's forced to become a landlord. It's the only greedy motherfuckers who want to gain capital in their status. Yes, I'm 14, and every single person that owns a residential fucking unit is actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, big bucks uh, monopoly man over here. This is not a defense of landlords in general, but like you have to be, uh, you know, aware of what the fuck you're saying. Again, though, I'm like literally talking about, I'm an advocate for decommodifying housing. And we're literally talking about a fucking chat on small part of the, uh, the, the overall much larger problem. So I, I hate having this conversation over and over again. Exactly. It's absolutely taking the bait Great off the industry game. trying to deflect focus on grandma and her infamous cakes is dumb. Exactly. Thank you. And that's what's really fucking annoying, especially because like Jake Tapper knows that there are Jake Tapper knows the situation. I'm assuming he also or personally owns a bunch of fucking houses, too. It would not be surprising to me. These people haven't lived in dog shit apartments right next to their also poor landlord before in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. That's what I mean. Like, these are fucking hella people that just, like, one year. literally own an extra fucking unit and rent it out because that's their fucking... That's the only way they can, uh, you know, have retirement. And I hate giving into this... Uh, giving into this framing and then talking about it over and over again because there's, like, dumbass fucking people in my chat who are like, fuck those people, fuck those people. Sorry, but so long as those landlords are willing and able to forcibly remove people from their homes, this is violence. Fuck those pigs. I don't have a problem. I, I agree with that as well. Don't get me wrong. Which is why I think that the government should offer assistance. This is the same energy as don't use plastic straws. That's why the pla planet is dying. Yes, there is no lefties. Uh, or there is no nuance when it comes to this conversation. Like, there are people who unironically can't lift themselves off their bootstraps. If, like, I I love telling slumlords who are fucking screaming on Fox News and on CNN about how, like, you know, they have to, uh, they, they just, they have to fucking evict people from their properties. Telling them to fucking pick themselves up by their bootstraps and get back to work is fun. And I agree. They should. Okay? But there's also the other side of this. Just like I tell you, literally fucking get a 401k if you can. Doesn't matter what you're doing. But you should you should absolutely plan for your own fucking future in retirement. Being a lefty 
uh, it does not mean that you should die at the age of 65 when you are no longer useful to your fucking capital owning bourgeois bosses. And there's nothing you can do, unfortunately, in the absence of like significant systemic uh, uh, changes. You're just going to have to look out for yourself and your own friends and your own family. And that's the reality. You can live in the nature for free. A tent isn't death. Okay, weird stalker. Are you going to invest some money in houses when? No. But I do have a fucking 401k. Nice or whatever the the individual version of that is. I have one. An so IRA. Yeah. Don't get banned, baby. And you should too. I mean, I this is like... I, I literally don't even fucking have a credit card. So obviously... Like, don't listen to me. I'm fortunate that uh, I have people who are much, much smarter, like accountants and shit like that, you know what I mean? That can deal with this stuff. Hasabi, who's saying a retirement account is unethical? Well, technically, capital ownership. That's, ca that's owning capital. And uh, benefiting from capital gains as a cons as a form of Eleven years. Uh, uh, building a retirement plan for yourself. That's what it is. So from a Marxist point of view, yes, a 401k would be unethical. 100% it would be. It's literally, it, it's the heart of, of Marxism. It's the heart of Marxism. It's just See. like you're, you're not even any way remotely connected to the actual uh, labor. And you're a faceless, lifeless uh, unit that owns just like like a tiny fucking piece of uh, a multitude of different companies that uh, exploits labor. So technically, you are literally fucking doing something that is uh, what the bourgeois engages in. And I've talked about how 401ks have made it so that many normal, like working class Americans, unironically, and uh, uh, believe that they are. Uh, they are a part of the the bourgeois uh, uh capital owning class because of their 401ks or operate that way that's why they're always like i'm checking the market oh my god what is my 401k doing meanwhile the reality is that the top 10 percent of wealth owns 90 percent of the fucking stock market so it, so if you're a part of the bottom 90 percent and you think you're a fucking capital owner because you have a 401k you're delusional you don't but of course uh, under the American system, under the American late-stage capitalist organization of the economy, the gains in the stock market are privatized, whereas the losses in the stock market are socialized. So yes, when the stock market is doing poorly, your 401ks do poorly as a consequence of that, especially if it fucking completely blows up. Look no further than the 2008 housing market uh, uh, crisis to recognize that. Anyway. <sighs> On out to help renters and small mom and pop landlords. No, it's crazy.